Zenless Zone Zero has become my favorite gacha game of all time and I am quite addicted to it. I am not shitting you man, because I've played a lot of gacha games since the Brave Frontier era, also played Summoner's War for a couple of years and just quit because it didn't stick with me. And the only gacha game that sticks with me until now is Epic 7. I mean I tried Honkai Star Rail but it still didn't stick with me, only played for like a year and then I got bored of it. Uh, maybe because I also love JRPG in general, that's why I love Epic 7 so much. But I actually took a break from Epic 7 for a couple of years, but when they added all these quality of life changes, I came back and it is super fun to play that game casually. Listen, I am never a competitive gacha gamer because, like, what's the use? If you wanna be competitive in that sort of games, you gotta be spending a lot of money and wasting your time. If you want to be a competitive player, there are a lot more games you can waste your time on without wasting a lot of money either. I mean, why waste both? But you know, that's just my opinion. Your time, your money, it's all up to you. Okay, so let's get back to the topic and here I'm going to talk about why this game is very different from a lot of gacha games and why this game is so addicting. You know what, let's just say that this is some kind of a review of this game. I mean some kind, not all kind. Alright, so let's get to it. Reason number one, the visuals. You cannot deny that this game is visually stunning. It's not that it is super realistic, but the art style of this game and the art direction of this game is just stunning and very eye-catching. Take a look at the details all the characters have. Even when someone is not interested in an anime game like Genshin Impact, some of them would actually want to try this game because how beautiful the art direction is. It is set in a modern future, some with cyberpunk as aesthetics, and very stylish for sure. It's like when you see Persona 5 Royale, you see that oh my god this JRPG is very stylish and you know what actually I want to give it a go because it is very different. And of course one of the examples again why this game is visually stunning is the impactfulness when you attack and hit an enemy. And I can actually give you the reason why this is very good in this game and very appealing to a lot of people. So the director of this game is actually a fan of fighting games like Tekken, Street Fighter and you know Super Smash Bros and so on. If you take a look at Street Fighter or Super Smash Bros, their game, you know, they are beauty they are a beautiful game but they are not super realistic, you know? A bit cartoonish actually. But when they punch, when they kick, when everything hits, the impactfulness and the style they have from the punches are very satisfying and rewarding and they are so impactful. It has these little pauses when they hit making you feel the impact same as Zenless Zone Zero. If you pay attention on Zenless Zone Zero, you can actually see the animation pauses when they hit an enemy. They also combine it with slow motion, to make it feel more satisfying and cool. Not to mention the visual effects for all the hits. I mean, it's not much, but it gets the job done, simple and clean. And people love simple and clean UI and heads-up displays. So there you go. That is why Zenless Zone Zero is visually stunning in a lot of ways. And that is also why people want to check out this game because it has all the fighting games mechanic added or, you know, visual effects added into this game. And who doesn't love fighting games, man? I mean, even if you don't play it, when you see Super Smash Bros, and when you see Tekken, when you see Street Fighter, man, they're all stunning. And it makes you feel that you want to play that game. And we gotta talk about the cutscenes in this game. Right. You can rely on us to protect you. This way, please. Mind your step now, dear. I'll do my best. They are all very good. They are so animated, full of crazy angles, the expressions of all the characters in the cutscenes, and they actually showcase the fights without creating annoying cuts. Now this is good shit. But I'll be honest with you, 
since this is a gacha game, I skip most of the dialogue and the story of the game, but when they have these unskippable cutscenes, they are actually entertaining and make me more interested in the game. I find that very rare on gacha games. You know, Genshin Impact used to be like that, like their cutscenes are interesting, but I don't know, it gets boring for me and the story is very uninteresting for me. Even Honkai Starwell, Woodring Waves too. Wuwa actually has a very good intro, but it is just downhill from that, so kind of a disappointment, honestly. And Wuwa's cutscenes are kinda meh, it's not as flashy or as animated as Zenla Zone Zero, so yeah, with no expressions on most characters in the game too, it is quite bad. And of course the voice acting too. Wuwa is absolutely not ready for launch, but I still don't know why they launch it. But hey, they are fixing most of the things, so that is also why Zenda Zone Zero is better than expected. When they launched the game, everything was mostly polished. The story through and through is very good and engaging, the character's voice acting is full of expressions, overall the story is quality and is very consistent. And man, I like that a lot in a lot of gacha games. And surprisingly, this game feels alive. All the area in the towns are full of people and we can mostly talk to most of them in this game. And then we can buy this and that, you know, it is very nice. I love this game, alright? <laughs> so yeah, it is very nice to play this game. But when we are speaking about a lively town, it will of course impact our performance. But in this game, the performance is really good. And of course, I play this on PC, never on mobile. So I know some mobile devices had problems with it when launched because there are no background, just black screens with the character shading and whatnot. So yeah, I, I really don't know that. But in my playthrough with PC, I had no problems at all. And other than a UI bug and maybe a not sync translation with the voice acting, but that's pretty much it. So this game on PC is top tier. There's no stuttering smooth gameplay overall, and most importantly, no FPS cap. Woodring Waves, yeah, I'm looking at you right now. And this is also one of the main reasons why ZZZ is a lot better than expected. You didn't expect everything to be working on the get-go, but man, ZZZ made it work. Everything. Even the performance, that is the most important part of the game because this game is an action game and you need a good performance and no starters to, you know, to parry, to do all these amazing combos in the game. Of course, speaking of parries and whatnot and the gameplay, let's talk about it. Yeah, the gameplay in this game is, for me, it is exquisite. Some say it is a button smasher. And yeah, sure, they are not wrong since this game is heavily inspired by fighting games and if you take a look at fighting games, they're all button masher, but it's always satisfying and rewarding when you get into the flow of the combo and this game is no different. Once you get into that chain attacks and parry and dodging and get into the flow with all the characters' resources, goddamn, you are having a very fun time in this game. I still cannot believe that this game is simple, yet satisfying and rewarding. Honestly, I was very skeptical when the gameplay trailer of this game is released. I was thinking to myself that this game's combat is super repetitive, but actually, it's just the player playing this game without any finesse. That's it. You as a player or as a gamer should try to combat yourself and you will feel the impact of the game. The game is really really inspired by fighting games and you can feel it. This game has parry, perfect dodge, and chain attacks. Pretty awesome, honestly. Now, the weird part about this game is that elements. I have been playing this game for about, you know, 40 hours or so, and I find myself just using anything that suits me well, like how I want to play the game, which is nice because you can be very flexible even though elements do some crowd control too. For example, if you use ice a lot, um, the enemies will freeze, if you use uh, Thunder a lot, or you know, in this game, Shock, the enemies will be shocked and the list goes on. Of course, most dungeons do recommend you to use this and that elements to make the run easier, but I think it's not mandatory. As long as it looks cool and you like the playstyle and it suits your team, 
man, just use whatever, honestly. But there are also attack types in this game. Now, for me, this is very important. I think this is more important than elements. So you have your standard DPS, and then you have stun, which is the one, you know, CCing the enemies, and usually will break the character faster so you can use chain attacks, and anomaly for getting that element debuff faster, and one more support to amp up your damage or CC. Not credit card, okay? Crowd control. And I think this is more important than elements because if you have the right type in your setup and usually it consists of DPS, stun, and support, you will break the enemies a lot faster to do chain attacks and gain your ultimate faster. So more DPS to clear everything faster than before. That's basically it. Because I did an experiment run where I ran everything with DPS and the other one with the optimal setup. Damn, I was having a blast with the optimal setup because you can chain attack faster and not just mashing one button all the time. If you use only DPS, you will find yourself having a hard time playing this game and just mashing one button most of the time. And speaking of mashing buttons, people always complain about this game that this is a button masher and it's not that hard. Yeah, the difficulty in this game is arguably very easy. Well, you can change the difficulty mode to challenge mode in story mode. I know it sounds very modey, but yeah. So before you go into any dungeon, you can change this difficulty to a challenge mode. But honestly, it doesn't matter whether it's challenge mode or not. It is still pretty easy, but not everything has to be hard to be fun, right? And this is coming from a guy who loves hard difficulty in many games. I've completed FF7 Remake on hard difficulty. I've completed Spider-Man in what is called Nightmare difficulty or uh, yeah, the new game plus one difficulty. I forgot the name. It's been so long. And I completed Final Fantasy 15 in level one. So hey, kudos to me. So yeah, this game is fairly, fairly easy, but it is still very fun. And it doesn't have to be hard to be fun, like I said. But I wish they add some quality of life changes in the battle so we don't have to mash buttons um, all the time because in many roguelike games or some fighting games, they have the option to toggle rapid fire. It means that if we hold down the button, they will continuously press the button for us, not only holding down the button. One of the example is Hades 2. Hades 2 did a good job at this uh, where they have hold down button for attack but still added this anyways. And the AI will use the hold down attack at the end of the combo. So we can still do all the combos despite having this rapid fire system. So please, Mihoyo, make this happen. We all need this because, man, mashing buttons, you know, repeatedly all the time, it gets tiring. It, it really does. <laughs> More ethereals incoming. Oh, and speaking of roguelike, this game also has this roguelike dungeon, same as you know Honkai Star L, which can be very challenging for some. The first dungeons are a bit easy, but the dungeons later on will be very hard to deal with. That's why playing this game, especially without the right characters in the later stages of the game, can be quite difficult, but it is not impossible. Now, I know you all be saying, but this is a gacha game, it's pay to win, blah blah blah. Okay, so let me explain a little bit about this game. You all know that this is a gacha game, and for me, I am a free to play player in all gacha games that I play. So I have pretty much a good understanding if the game is not free to play friendly and this is not one of them this is one of the most free to play friendly gacha games that i know but with that being said gacha games always have a predatory system to milk your wallet and this is no different in this case you will need to upgrade your characters using the resources gained by using stamina point and if you use all your stamina you gotta pay for more or wait till it replenish honestly I hate this kind of sh system, really does, because it limits the player to play the game all day. And we need two teams to clear the later dungeons. And one team consists of three members. And we gotta build six characters so we can play the end game. 
Yeah, it is a lot of work. It is. And this game has a gacha system for characters and weapons. Why would you implement this stamina thingy if we need to grind most of the time? Everything you do that will upgrade your characters requires stamina points. Getting weapon materials, ranking up weapons, level up weapons and characters, upgrading your character skill level, and the list goes on. That's why I suggest you that if you wanna play this game, be patient because this game is not a sprint, it is like running a marathon, so be patient. You don't need all the characters to be the best in this game because who fucking cares, right? Because it is a single player game. And keep this in mind again that this game is fairly easy and experiments with what you have and what is the best theme for you. Don't be a whiny little bitch if you don't get something. This game is not a race and try to look up some good guides out there because there are so much misleading info on the internet and yeah, I don't like most Zenless Zone Zero gacha gamers or even gacha YouTubers because I, mean, I don't know man, it, they don't tell you the truth, they just want you to be on the guide. Uh, I, I don't know man, I just don't like it. And for me, I just play the game the way I like it and understand what the game is and have a good time without being spoiled by guides. That's me. But at the end of the day, it's your money and I have no control over it. Do what is best for you and if spending a ton of money into this gambling waifu collection is fun, then you do you. You know, your happiness is to treat yourself and that's that. Another thing to mention is that this game is not an open world game. Not even a semi open world. Is it disappointing? No, not at all. Honestly, open world games like Genshin Impact or Woodring Waves are kinda boring for me and a bit of a waste of my time. You know what? Actually, not a bit. Actually, a lot. A lot, yeah. Because you need to go here to find your resources, you need to collect this and that. But here, you just go into a dungeon and you will find your resources with no time wasted. So I like that a lot. And in this game, you can multiply your rewards by spending more stamina in that dungeon. So that is really good. You are not wasting your time at all in this game. Man, I fucking love it. Quality of life too. I love it when you are in a quest, you can just travel to that area without needing to search for the area. Like for example, you press the fast travel button, in my case it's R1 because I play this game with my PS5 controller. So you press R1 and just confirm and confirm again and you will automatically be in the area of the quest without you needing to look where you should be going. Now that is really really good, fucking love the quality of life in this game. And this game, no doubt. And another one is just clicking a single button to max out your level. And another one is just from clicking a single button to max out your level. From the clean UI design. Man, clean UI, de clean UI design and a good quality of life is life changing. And this game offers you a pretty good one. Not the best, but it is pretty good. It's better than most. Well, for multiplayer, I don't think this game has multiplayer at all, but it is really nice to have, but I'll be honest, I have no friends, hence why I play single player gacha games, and I don't even bother to look if this game has multiplayer or not. So yeah, I, I know this game can add friends, but I still don't know the use, and I haven't added anyone yet, so I cannot say much about the multiplayer, although as far as I know, um, you can play the mini games with your friends in this game so that's pretty nice i guess and being this is a live service game some things are gonna change maybe some bad things that you don't like are gonna be updated and maybe you will like it or hate it even more and as far as i know the next update they are taking all the feedback from the community and everyone seems to be liking it so i think that's a good thing and a lot more quality of life features to make the gameplay experience better and while I was making this video, they released the patch 1.1 and they added a lot of quality of life features and changes and making the gameplay better, adding new characters and new events so we can have more free stuff. And free stuff is always nice and everyone seems to love the new update and so do I, man. 
the new character man Ching Yi. God damn, that that girl is badass. Now, what is Zenless Zone Zero to be specific? Well, Zenless Zone Zero is a dystopian tale set in a future where technology dominates human life. It follows Zenith, who uncovers the manipulative control of a tech corporation over society through visual reality simulations called Zen Zones. As Zenith questions the impact of technology on human connection and identity, he joins others in a quest to reclaim genuine human experiences amidst a virtual dominated world. Uh, after all of that, you are a video game store and somehow a proxy that can fix the world. That's pretty much the context of the game. Now, this is my favorite thing to talk about and it is the audio. We gotta talk about that music. It's banging all the way from start to finish. The music suits the game super well with what the situation is. Like when there is a mystery, the music goes into this exciting and mysterious kind of way. Well, I don't know how to explain it, but when you listen to it, you get the idea what I'm trying to say here. And in the fight scenes too, everything is just good and spot on. Voice acting is also very good. Unpopular opinion here. But a good English voice acting is so much better than Japanese voice acting. Very good voice acting, especially for a free-to-play game. And I gotta say, man, I think this is way better than most AAA games or, you know, AA games, indie games. And the pauses between dialogues are very minimal too, even though they still have dialogue choices, which I hated a lot, man. But they have a skip cutscenes, so it is a good thing to have, and it makes the animated cutscenes more enjoyable because of the great voice acting, the great animation, the expressions of all the characters in the game. Man, imagine a free-to-play game has a better cutscenes than most paid games. It is just uncanny, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Also, this is a story-driven gacha game, so it helps a lot um, having a good voice acting and a good animated cutscene. So, yeah, pretty good. So, the last but not least is the overall of this game. Well, this game is simple, satisfying, easy, and fun. But the gacha system is quite predatory, so keep that in mind when playing this game. Is it a bad game? Not at all. And honestly, it can be quite addicting because how fun the game is and how fun the combat is. But it does need some improvement from the quality of the features and making the gameplay a bit smoother than before. Overall, this game is good. And... I wouldn't mind spending my time on this game and a bit of money because this game has quality and the devs knows what's good and really listens to their community. So this game is worth to try on and it is a free to play game. I know some of you might be discouraged by the fact that this is a gacha game but you know what, try it first. Don't say that you don't like it before you try something new. So that's pretty much what my review of this game or basically why this game can be very addicting. It's just because of the quality of this game and the inspiration from the fighting games because fighting games can be really addicting. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys on Zenless Zone Zero.